everyone, it's me Charlotte. Welcome back to my channel and this is episode 3 of the Junket Folder. I just wanted to do a little quick disclaimer before we get into this episode. Upon editing the video, which I've been working on for the last couple of days, I have noticed that my audio for some reason was not working. I was not aware while I was doing the interview that there were problems with the microphone. What I think has happened is that the USB stick hasn't been plugged in or the interviewing software that I was using, it gives you options for microphones and I just had computer audio rather than the plug-in mic. Where I feel the audio has dipped significantly where you really can't make me out at all, I've added subtitles so hopefully there shouldn't be any issues there. There's no ending to this video, it kind of just ends abruptly because Rochelle and I um, agreed that we'd like take a quick break because we've been chatting a bit before the interview um, and it kind of just ended kind of messed up way, like I don't know, it just kind of ended. So um, it just kind of goes like that so it just ends. Second point is that Rochelle's pet pig Gunther is sat beside her during the interview so you can hear him making his happy noises, um, kind of going and all that stuff. So it's not anyone's tummies, it's just me and Rochelle uh, chatting and then you can hear Gunther. And uh, also this is a two-parter so there's going to be a bonus episode so anybody that uh, submitted any questions for Rochelle to do with the crow that will be in tomorrow's episode. I will leave a link to that down below when the episode is live. Uh, so this interview is just all about Rochelle, just questions for her, nothing to do with the crow at all but I highly suggest that you watch this anyway because you'll get to know her, you'll get to know what she likes, would she go back to the past, would she go to the future, what her favourite foods are. That's the kind of thing that we're doing in this interview. So without any further ado I'm just gonna go ahead and roll the interview. So this is episode three of the junket folder with Rochelle Davis. I did make a tea. I did make a cup of tea. I didn't you know what well let me grab the tea. I have to have the tea now. I was wondering Rochelle and I we said to each other we're gonna make cups of tea for the interview. Um and I remembered and Rochelle hasn't remembered but it's okay she doesn't have to but it's fine. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's me Charlotte. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi. My name's Charlotte. I am a Scottish vlogger and YouTuber from Glasgow. And uh, this is episode three of the Junket Folder and I, I actually can't believe that we're on episode three already. I'm so excited about this episode. Uh, my guest uh, is someone that up until last year, I really didn't know existed. The film that I saw her in didn't even know it was a thing until Cameron showed it to me. And uh, first of all, Cameron, thank you so much for doing that um, because th without that, this would not be happening. So uh, without any further ado, I'm going to introduce my guest. You'll know her from playing Sarah, the cool skateboarding chick from the Brandon Lee movie, The Crow. So without any further ado, let's say hi to my friend, Rochelle Davis. Hello. How are you? I'm great. I'm talking to you. I'm always great when I'm talking to you. Yeah, Rochelle and I are, uh, I, I would say we're old pals at this point. Like we both, I, I think we are yeah. kindred spirits from far away, kindred spirits, 100%. We both Definitely. love tea, we both love good movies, we like good music, we like, love a good chin wag. By the way, we do. Um, the first time Michelle yeah. and I met, um, you were, you were doing a, a sleep apnea um session, I believe, and you were really, really tired. And I said, Oh, okay, that's fine, we can cancel the interview, but would it be okay if I came on for like five minutes just to say hello? And Rochelle was like, yeah, that's fine. Literally like two hours later and we were just still talking, <laughs> like still having a gab, just talking about anything and everything. Um, it was just one of the best conversations I've ever had and I was really sad when it was over, but it was getting close to like 10 o'clock at night here. So I was like, I right, gotta go to bed. But we've stayed in touch ever since. And yeah, and of course I wasn't beautiful at that point. I wasn't like camera ready or, you know, and I was all yawny from having sleep apnea and all that stuff. So I didn't sound as lovely, but it was girl talk. So just do tea and look crappy and yeah. talk about good stuff. So two hours was, it was like 10 minutes when we, and we were like, were we talking this long? Yeah. But that was yeah. awesome. But I was taking it up a level. We've hit, we've hit blockbuster level, everybody. I'm talking to... Rochelle Davis, who was Sarah in the Crow, who literally was the coolest cat in town. I loved that film so much. But we're going to get into that a little later, that in a little while. Right now, I want everyone to get to know Rochelle because she's so awesome and I kind of want everyone to see that. So let's, Thank you. Let's start this. So start off a little this or that round, just of like fun things to do. So how many questions are Yay, okay. This is for anybody that's ever wanted to. Does Rochelle like sweet or salty? Sweet or salty? Yeah. 
definitely sweet. I've never been much of a salty person. I'm not like a chip eater. I know people can just eat bags of chips and like popcorn and stuff. I'm like, I can eat like two or three or four and I'm like, I'm good on that. But if you give me sweet stuff, I might not stop. So I try not to buy sweet stuff. Are you a pasta or a pizza person? Probably more of a pasta person. I like both, but probably if I had to choose, I'd be more of a pasta person. Do you prefer ice cream or gelato? Mm, ice cream. We have a place around here that's a farm and they make, I mean, they have their own milk that they have from their cows and they make their own ice cream with that milk. I mean, it's, it's just so good. It's, and they make their own cool flavors. I mean, every, any time I go past there, I have to buy ice cream. It's so amazing. Do you prefer breakfast or brunch? Breakfast or brunch? Um, I like brunch. Cake or pie? Cake. I already know the answer to this, tea or coffee? <laughs> tea, and I do love coffee, but I am a tea person. I love me some tea. Yeah, I have a whole tea station. <laughs> I've seen it. It's, it puts every Scottish and English person to shame. Rochelle has the most amazing tea cabinet. I swear you have every flavor. I have a tea cabinet and a tea station. Like, I don't mess around. And then I keep some in my purse, so yeah, tea. And I do drink a lot of coffee, too, but... If somebody like had a gun to my head and they were like, you can always drink coffee or always drink tea, but never both. I'd be like, tea, it's tea. Like that would be it. Oh, right. Okay. Do you like pancakes or crepes better? Ooh, I guess crepes. Cause I like waffles better than pancakes. Right. But I will eat pancakes, but if it was a choice, yeah, crepes are good. Cause they're thinner and kind of yummy. They have that like crispy little edge sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that was our little uh, icebreaker segment, and I, I mean, I say icebreaker, I'm, I think we're both comfortable anyway, but that was just for anybody that ever wanted to know which one she prefers, got your answers, so there you go. Um, so yeah, these are just some questions that I pegged together just for fun. How would you like to be remembered after you've left the room? I guess unforgettable. <laughs> What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, I think the best piece of advice I ever received was to, like, really, I, I'm not a religious person, but um, I've always really stuck to um, the serenity prayer. I guess growing up in a family that, you know, did a lot of Alcoholics Anonymous type stuff. Um, so even though I'm not religious, that prayer in particular is very, that's like kind of my best advice that I've always taken because each part of that means so much, you know, um, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And that is what I kind of follow every day of my life. If I have to stop myself and think about it it really does get me through a lot of times because I get stuck and I'll think about something and then I'll be like, wait, sometimes I just have to accept I can't change this or I have to accept that I can and do what I need to change it. And sometimes it's just figuring out what that is. You know, is it something I can change or is it not? And am I struggling with that? So I think that's the best advice was just hearing that as a little girl and realizing that could kind of get me through anything if I apply it to something. So, yeah, it's not any one in particular. I've gotten a lot of advice from different people, but that's really good. <laughs> uh, who would you speak out over at the moment in your life? Well, he's not alive anymore, but George Carlin. I don't know who He was my is. absolute idol. You don't know who that is? I well, I'll tell faces. you who that is. I know his face, but I'm really bad with names. <laughs> he was a comedian for... Uh, 50 plus years um, one he's like the they, they call the holy trinity of comedy George Carlin um, Lenny Blue, Brent, Lenny Bruce George Carlin and Richard Pryor um, and they were like the starters of the kind of huge comic boom that happened but you probably know him by face he was in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure oh right okay wait he's the guy in, the guy that comes in the Oh, I know. Down. Okay, see, see, definitely know him. 
I know. I just don't know his name. He's a very, very, very famous stand-up comedian. He also was the voice in that narrated Thomas the Tank Engine for many, many years. So you might have heard him in that, but just didn't know who he was. But yeah, he was an extremely famous comedian for over 50 years. Did 12, I think, or more um, comic specials on HBO. Um, and he was just, and he was really just very intelligent, incredibly, really good with words. And he passed away when he was 70 something, but like he was still doing specials. Like he did a special that year or the year before he passed away. Um, so, and he was just my idol. So if I had a chance to meet anybody, it would definitely be him. So that kind of, that last question could kind of marry into the next one. Um, but who is your biggest influence? Well, I would say it's it's a combination of, of a bunch of females, right. like Adam George Carlin, of course, because he's been a huge influence throughout my life, just the way he, his comedy has influenced my mind. But um, but a lot of females have influenced me, actresses, um, characters that I've watched over the years, honestly, have influenced me, like Anna Green Gables. I grew up reading that and watching the series when I was little. Um, Pippi Longstocking, P Punky Brewster, like those kind of characters kind of inspired me. Even um, when I watched Paper Moon as a little girl, that's an old, old movie with Tatum O'Neill. Like that made me think like little girls could be that when they're little and still be actresses. And like that gave me that feeling like even though I was little and doing that as a little girl, gave me the feeling that I could actually do that as a living no matter what age I was or, you know, so... A lot of females like that shaped me. Um, Patty Duke was somebody I grew up watching on Nick at Night. And then right before I did the film, um, she actually was somebody I talked to about being a bipolar child that was going into Hollywood. So she shaped a lot of who I was. Like, it was quite a few women, my mother, my grandmother, you know, my sister, unfortunately, even though we don't get along, you know, just a lot of, a lot of females, I think mostly. And then there was a, a few males too, my grandfather and, you know, George Carlin and um, Brandon and, you know, people that would come in and show me like what, what it's like to have men in your world as well. So I don't think it was any one person, though. I think it was a lot of people combined. I'm very moved by that. Um, well, I think it's crazy to think that one person, I mean, it's a good question, but I just think it's insane to think that, I mean, and I think a lot of people would say one person did, but for me, I think that would be insane to say that one person did because there's just so many people that have influenced who I am. Yeah, I like that. Let's move on to some of the kind of more fun ones. I think we have four left of these. Uh, could you tell me what your most used emoji is? <laughs> um it's either the laughy face or the little like crazy face with the tongue sticking out um like the one eye closed and the one tongue sticking out probably one of those that's awesome i think mine is the black love heart um because i usually just kind of like leave that on all my photographs and stuff um but it's the the head that's tilted then it's laughing with the tears coming out the, I think that's the lucky one I use the most too because yeah. I like that one better than the regular one with the t like I just like it it looks more animated but yeah that's the last one I wore. Okay if you could travel back to any era which one would you go to? I wouldn't I'd go to the future because times were terrible for females in the past. Oh I, I did not expect you to say that at all. Never go a day in the past not one hey. I would go forward. Wow. See, because I'm like a, a huge um, Outlander fan, I kind of think, but I know if I went, like, I'd be screwed. Like, I would not. I was like, a man, I might, but not a <laughs> yeah, woman. Yeah. No way. No <laughs> way. There's not one time in the past that's better for us. So I would definitely move forward. Yeah. I could, only if that was an option, or I'd, I'd go a day, a day in the past. That's the only further in the past that I would go because yeah. it's not going to be better for us. <laughs> Just to be safe. <laughs> but not anywhere in the past. <laughs> no past for Rochelle. No past. Or no past. <laughs> no. Past is past. <laughs> yeah, the past is past. That's true. Uh, do you prefer writing with either blue or black ink? Black only. Never blue. I don't mind. I've, I've asked oh, people before and they're like, oh, it has to be one color. And I'm like, I'm easy as long as I have a pen because if I'm scrambling around, I'll take what I can get. 
<laughs> well, you want to know why? I'm traumatized by blue, blue pens. <laughs> wait, wait, I wait, went to jail. That's so funny. Why? Why are you trying? I went to jail, and they don't let you use any ink but blue. Oh, right. Okay. So I used blue ink for like four months, and when I got out of there, I was like, I will never use a blue pen again. I'm sorry, I laughed. I should. I thought it was. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's totally funny. I don't. I laugh at my pain all the time. That's why I want to do comedy because it's totally funny to laugh at your pain. That's how you get through it. But it's just funny because I used them for, and, and it's only that color blue, like that plain, you know, big color blue. Because if I get like a pretty blue, like one of those fancy color blues that you get all the multicolor, I can use those blues. Yeah. But it's just that plain blue that you get in like the Vic blue. Can't use it. So if somebody's like, you know, plain blue and a bl I'm like, black pen, I'll take that. Only if it's like, you know, some places if you sign a legal document, they make you sign in blue because it's on a piece of paper and it make a copy. And so that's the only reason I'll have to do it because they make you. But right. that's because I'm forced. But if I have the option, I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. No, give me another color, any other color. But yeah, it's totally funny when you when you think back. At the time, it was horrible, <laughs> but now it's hilarious. I'm like, I'm tortured by blue ink. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say something like, "Oh, one time I was I, like, I chewed on a blue pen and I had like blue ink all over me." Or some I thought it was gonna be something like that. I I really didn't. I'm just, oh. <laughs> yeah, don't be sorry. It, it did. Like I said, it's totally funny now. It was also what like uh, I don't even know how many years ago. Over twelve, over over eleven or twelve years. It was. 2006 okay so yeah very long time ago so it's not like it's like an open wound for me or anything plus i played scrabble in that blue ink it couldn't have been that bad i had a great celly and we cracked up half the time so we we, we did all right <laughs> okay if you were any of the breakfast club characters which one would you be oh oh <laughs> i know exactly i'd be i'd be the weirdest one of course um What's her name? Jeez, oh, God, I watched that sh movie every day for a year, and I can't think of her name. Is it Allie? Um, yeah, Allie. 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 Yeah, she. Yeah, totally. I'd be her. Yeah, I kind of. I kind of. I mean, her. in school, I wouldn't say now, but in school, I would. I would probably be her. I mean, I don't think I'd be any of the other characters in real, you know, in my years now, but in school, yeah, it would have been her. Yeah, I would say I was probably a mix of the little nerdy kids. Uh, the one that like got picked on and a little bit of Ali and also a little bit of Judd Nelson just because he kind of rebelled and was really fierce and I would like to think that because I did all the school plays and I used to sing for I, like I had that confidence that he kind of you know if I yeah I'm familiar, thinking a little of him too now that I think of it because I was a little tough little bitch too <laughs> I had my I had my moments where people were like I don't want to mess with her but I was also a little bit kind of sweet and soft like her so I had my two sides so I guess I I relate to that I'd be a little both of them too yeah but I also thought he was cute I thought she was cute too <laughs> I thought they were both cute how did I think both the characters that were me were cute all right I gotta deal with that in therapy <laughs> Uh, did you ever start a rumor? And if you did, what was it? I would only start rumors about myself and I would make up like three different ones mm -hmm. and give them to different people to see who was starting rumors about me. That's Because cool. whichever one got passed around, I'd know who started the rumor. Oh, I love that. I've, I've heard that told. before, but I've never done it. But I would probably do that with like a group of like work friends or something. So I might... I might try that out one day. Um, but yeah, I'm not a big rumor spreader of other people. I don't like being that way. But when I think somebody might be doing it to me, that's how I catch them. That is the end of that little round. Um, I actually had to write down the last four questions because <laughs> I deleted them off the computer and I couldn't get them back in time. Um, so the, this, these questions are all about Scotland. So I like to add a little Scottish round in here. They're really they're fairly easy. It's just they're it's just fun to see what uh, people across the pond uh, think. Okay, so the first question is, what colours make up the Scot the Scottish flag? Uh, I believe it's... Um, I'll say... Blue, white, and yellow? Nope, it's just blue and white. Blue and white, okay. Yeah, I don't know why yellow came in there. I was trying to like picture it in my head, and I'm like, 
but I have a lot of flags that I know from different people. So I'm like rustling through them. Okay. <laughs> Bloom, I got it. Yeah, it's just the blue with the sole tire. <laughs> that was my question mark. Yellow? No, okay. Blue, I got it. <laughs> okay, what is the Loch Ness Monster's nickname? Nessie. Yes. Yes. Do you know that there is a man, this isn't a question, this is just a bit of a fun fact. There's a man, and he's really well known, um, kind of like in Scotland, and like in the area, who lives in a caravan on Loch Ness. Ness just watches the lake every day, just the log every day, just to see if he can see this thing. Serious? I'm serious. See, I just saw something the other day that that showed like pictures of uh, whale penises, right? and they look exactly like Nessie. <laughs> and I was like, oh god, have people been <laughs> thinking that? <laughs> Nessie, I mean, has whale penises been Nessie? This, and I'm like, oh my god, that's horrifying that we have been like people have been staring at these whale penises, going, look, there's a Loch Ness. And so if this guy is living out there for 50 years, staring at whale penises, I'm sad for him. I feel bad for his life. But I guess he really likes whale penises that are called Nessie, if that's the case. I mean, they used to be yeah, like, the famous, sir. Yeah, he's done a lot of like, <laughs> newspapers and they like um, make they, like get shows about him. Not made all the time, they've done a couple of shows about him, but he makes his living by making little clay, like Nessie, Toy, like toys or dolls and he'll charge people to, he'll charge people to come and like paint them and then they can take them away as gifts so that's how he makes his money good for him good for him hey you know what i say if it makes you happy you're not hurting anybody nothing yeah. wrong with it i hope he's still there because i'm I mean, I'd like yeah he's even the wiser that they're, they're rail penises then he's you know his perception says reality he's really there looking at nessie good for him <laughs> no, but nobody's harmed in that and when you think about it, guys really like it when you look at that. So they're coming there showing their, and he's looking. So somebody's looking for them. Everybody wins. If only they knew. If only they knew. <laughs> Maybe they do. Maybe that's why they keep showing up. They're like, hey, we come here. This guy's staring at us. We got to keep coming back here. <laughs> keep looking at our, you know. Maybe that's why it's legend. Maybe we cracked the case. <laughs> All right, and the last question about my, my Scottish round is uh, which Scottish actor played James Bond? Oh, uh, Connery. Sean Connery. Sean Connery, that was him. Hell yeah, my favourite of all of them. Yeah. He was the Bond, are you kidding? It's so strange, I'd never seen a Sean Connery Bond until I saw Goldfinger. Mm. And then he died like the month after and I was like, oh my god, did I kill Sean Connery? Because I've never seen his oh, movie. <laughs> it's just such a gem. 